Oh, hello everybody. I hope you are watching me in VR right now. If not, pause this video, pick up your Oculus Go, and come join me in virtual reality. Today, by popular request from my viewers, I'm going to compare top 5 most popular consumer and professional VR 180 cameras in 2019. These cameras are Insta360 Evo, View XR, Kendall Cool Cam, Lenovo Mirage, Z Cam K1 Pro, which is a professional VR 180 camera, and the Insta360 Pro 2, which can also do VR 180 with a different way to shoot 3D 180. We'll take a look at some of the image quality factors of all these cameras, including sharpness, chromatic aberration, distortion, color accuracy, noise, tonal response, texture response, dynamic range, contract resolution, and flare, which we all know is a big issue for Fish Island's camera. With the professional VR 180 camera as the benchmark, hopefully by the end of this series of videos, you can make a logical decision on which camera to bring on your next virtual reality adventure. Let's dive right in. Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Hugh here from Creator Up. Filming me right now is the Zcam K1 Pro. This is one of the best VR 180 camera out in the market in terms of image quality and stereoscopic quality. It is a professional level camera and just the camera body itself will cost around 3,000 US dollars if B&H is not in back order. This is the same camera shot the Joey Grosafa Escape the Night VR trailer and the Elton John concert on YouTube VR. You can check out my complete detailed review and comparison right here on Creator Up. The link is down below. Next, we have the Insta360 Evo, which is the camera everybody talking about. It is a 5.7K VR180. Here is the spec on screen for this camera. Before we talk about the image quality and stereoscopic quality, let me explain my testing environment and where you should look in VR headset. But disclaimer, this is not a professional testing studio with a scientific testing procedure. This is just a very busy VR filmmaker's way to figure out which camera to use for his next job. Here is the testing environment. We have all five cameras filming at the same time on top of each other in the same distance toward me. We have the KinoFlow professional studio light as the light source with exactly daylight in 5500 Kelvin. All cameras are calibrated in 5500 daylight in white balance. The camera calibrate chart right here, three feet away from all the cameras, which is the standard VR 180 sweet spot. I am standing exactly four feet away from the cameras. In the chart right here, we have 11 step grayscale bars will help you to see the bit depth of the VR cameras. It also let you see the dynamic range of the cameras from white to black. The color bar on the side will help you to look at the camera color reproduction. The semen star in each corner is for image resolution. We also place objects at different distance to test out the convergence and depth handling for each camera, aka stereoscopic quality. The second chart right here is two feet away from all the cameras the mini focal calibration charge right here is exactly one foot away from the cameras. Nothing should go closer than one foot to avoid cross eye for your viewers. Lastly, we have overlay a degree chart at the bottom so you can see 
the actual field of view of each camera. So now you watch the K1 Pro and Evo in the VR headset. I hope you have a clear idea of the look and few differences between a small size sensor VR 180 cameras like the Evo and the K1 Pro. If you can't tell from the YouTube compression, I would highly recommend you to download the original video and sign on it onto your VR headset and check. I provided the 5.7K of this video free to download. Link is in the description below. Please do drop a like if you find the test footage helpful. Now you are looking at outdoor real world footage of the EVO shot at WonderCon 2019, which is held at Anaheim Convention Centers next to Disneyland, California. So the immediate impression is all of them, including the Zcam K1 Pro, has issues with compression due to block size. If you look at the K1 Pro portion again with my overlay GH5 2D footage, you can clearly see the differences. That is why if you don't need VR 180 and 3D is not gonna help your narrative, don't shoot VR 180. 2D is still a lot better and a lot cheaper. For small sensor cameras like the EVO, Coolcam, Views XR and Mirage, they all have issues with detail because of aggressive compression. Look at the Siemens Star or any fine details, you can immediately see the problem. Basically, just like we compare a GoPro footage to a Michael Forster DSLR, you pay what you get. It is actually easy to see the difference when you see it one after the other. Let me challenge you a little bit. Comment below and tell me what you think after seeing VR 180 footage from a Michael Forster sensor camera compared to a 1 over 2.3 inches sensor cameras. Bigger is better is not always the case though. If you pay attention to the edge of the lens, you will see more chromatic aberration from the K1 Pro. Also, if you look down at the measuring tape, here is the K1 Pro. As you see, the number 4, 5, and 6 are pretty blurry. The new Aizuka lens on the K1 Pro will hopefully fix these issues. But since I don't have the new model, so I don't know. Hopefully, Kinson from Zcam will send me a new unit so I can do an update for you guys. The Zcam also have some minor flicker in VR headset, like the whole frame slapping every one seconds. It seems like the default GOP group of pictures compression is one second. Again, this is just my guess by looking at many K1 Pro footage in a VR headset. The EVO looks smoother in that sense. Considering the price point, the EVO image quality is very impressive with decent dynamic range and pretty even edge to edge lens sharpness. Besides image quality, one thing I need to point out is the stereoscopic quality. All the EVO footage you saw is fixed in Mystica VR on the zero sphere which I detailed it in this tutorial. Instar360 will release an official firmware update that fixed the stereo issue, so no need to worry. Basically, the issue makes close-up objects hard to see in VR headset by pushing them even closer. As you see in the mini focal chart right here, I would highly recommend putting your subject matter at least two feet or 1.5 meters away from the camera to avoid making your viewers uncomfortable or worse, crossing their eyes. This suggestion applies to all VR 180 cameras, not just EVO. Okay, let's take a look at a different camera here. Now we have the Views XR in the exact same tech. Here is the spec on screen for the Views XR. XR in the current firmware actually does not provide any menu setting. You cannot set your ISO, shutter speed, or even white balance. So it is really easy to lose detail in highlight as you see from the window here on my left. This is my biggest complaint about this camera. Views XR software does provide ProRes output, which removes one level of compression during stitching. So the end video looks slightly cleaner than Evo, especially if you pay attention to the white wall behind me. All other camera have three levels of H.264 compression from capture to software stitch to final render. Still, the quality difference is really minimal and most of the time you can't really tell. So don't get hung up on that. 
I also like the color representation of the XR. Look at the skin tone color block on the chart. I think Vue did a pretty good job on matching the skin tone. In terms of dynamic range, Evo seemed to be a bit better because of the ability to manually control everything. But some YouTubers suggest HDR of Evo will make it even better, which I think they are wrong. I detailed it what is HDR in this video. Basically, without 10-bit sensor, you cannot do HDR. Take a look at this Evo footage in regular mode. Yes, the outside window are blown out, but the base of the airplane is black and the text is white. Take a look at the HDR version. The black bay and white text are all shift to magenta. In a sense, the black is not black and the white is not white. It is actually losing dynamic range. It also generates lots of noise in the shadow area around movement, as you see from the moving plane. So I will suggest don't use the HDR mode. Use the manual mode for precise control for your exposure. Now let's quickly jump to Kendall Kukem. I put the spec on screen. Coolcam remains one of my favorite VR 180 cameras for travel and when I don't want to bring a charger with me. The camera feels like it lasts forever compared to others, and it is very reliable no matter how cold and how hot is the weather. It's also my backup camera if my two GH5 with Antonia How 200 failed on set. One noticeable feature to make this camera a must-have is the ability to do super slow motion in 4K VR180, which is detailed in this video. Unfortunately, as you see here, 4K is a disadvantage compared to EVO and VIEW XR. If you look at the chart in front of me, you can tell the aggressive compression artifacts due to low resolution. Also, CoolCam is not a full 180 degrees. I overlay the degree chart so you can see it yourself. Lastly, we have the Lenovo Mirage. I'm actually the first person did a complete detailed VR 180 review of the Mirage when it came out. You can check it out right here on Creator Up. But I have to say, don't get it. It has that stereo disparity issue actually worse than Insta360 EVO and lower 4K resolution just like the cool cam. The lenses had chromatic aberration if you turn and look at the window and the same focusing issue around the edges like the Zcam K1 Pro. It does have the advantage in price point, it only costs 256 US dollars. Thank you for watching this very in-depth VR180 comparison of the top 5 VR180 cameras. I hope this can serve as your number one initial buying guide, as they all have their strong points and weaknesses. Knowing what is the best camera for the job is crucial instead of blindly following marketing hypes and bias reviews. I hope this series of VR 180 videos could help you make the right choice. As you see in the background, the next episode we will focus on low light performance of all top 5 cameras. The result is actually very surprising and you need to watch this if you are considering low light filmings or even indoor VR 180. The third episode, we will compare Insta360 Pro 2 VR 180 with all of these VR 180 cameras. So if you own Insta360 Pro 2 and considering VR 180 production, you have to watch episode 3. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you are new here and click the bell to keep up to date. Help me to become the most hardworking YouTubers to bring you the latest information in the VR filmmaking industry by liking and sharing my videos. Oh, don't forget to comment below and tell me what you think is the best VR 180 cameras and why after watching this video with your VR headset. Your comments will also help others to decide what they should buy. And sharing is loving. Just know your action and your opinion are helping the whole industry to grow. So I hope to hear from you soon. Smash that like button and I will see you in my next low light comparison video.